All right, everyone, it's the section you've been waiting for. This is rules for differentiation, which means you don't have to do that long limit stuff anymore. We are doing some shortcuts now. Um, so I'm going to start off by explaining the rule, doing an example, and then you're going to have lots of practice of it. Um, so the first rule is the derivative of a constant function equals zero. Okay, so d dx of a constant equals zero. Here's the example one. Find the derivative of 5, where 5 represents a function. So I'm going to go ahead and draw a function. I think red is probably pretty easy to see. Um, if this is the line y equals 5, d dx stands for derivative. Okay, so what is the derivative? What is the slope of that line? Well, the slope the entire time is 0, my friends. So that answer will always be 0. It's our favorite rule ever. Rule number two is the power rule, and for this, you have to ensure that you have x raised to a constant. Okay, so this is x raised to a constant. Write it down. Okay, in that case, all you have to do is take the constant, put it to the front, and lower the power by one. So here we've got a lovely, power, um, a lovely function f of x equals x to the fourth. So differentiate means find the derivative. Proper notation, we were given x, now we'll use f of, uh, we were given f of x, we'll use f prime of x. So the derivative of this, you are going to take the four, you are going to drag it down to the front, you are going to rewrite x, and you're going to drop the power by one. La 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 la, that's it. Who loves derivative rules? All right, example three, we're going to do another example of the power rule. And sometimes you're going to see it where the power um, is there, but you got to do a little something extra to it. So for example three, f of x, I'm going to rewrite this as x to the negative second. If you remember your, um, your exponent rules, you can bring it out of the denominator, but then make the power negative. And now df dx... That's what I was asking for in this problem. Bring the power to the front, leave the x alone, and now subtract 1 from the power. Negative 2 minus 1 is a negative 3. If you would like to rewrite this in proper notation, not always necessary, but good for practice for multiple choice, that's what it would look like. Oh, love it. All right, for this next one, we have the constant multiple rule. So if you are taking the derivative of a constant times a function, so this is u, u is a function of x, you can literally pull that constant to the front and then do the derivative of u. So here's how it would work in action. Now granted, you're going to see ways, just like we did with some of the limit properties, that you're going to end up doing shortcuts even upon these rules. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and show it all the way out. So for this, df dx equals, so you can do the derivative of x squared, but then that 4 could have been pulled out to the front. Okay, so this would just be 4 times, and now you go back and use rule number 2, that power rule. So the 2 comes down x, drop the power by 1, and you get a 1. So this ends up being 8x. All right, and that's it. So again, if you just looked at this and said, well, I would have 4 times, bring the power down, drop it by 1. That's supposed to be a 1 right there. I fixed that because I'm, there we go. Um, and then just that you know, you don't have to go through the process of writing this part out. Okay, so if you can just see that you would bring the power down and go that way and then multiply it by the constant at the end, you can do that as well. Um, likewise, with rule number four, same thing. You can do the derivative of each piece separately. So df dx, that's what this rule says. If you have the sum or the difference of two functions of x, you can just do each derivative separately. So the derivative will do the 2x to the fifth first. If you follow the power rule and the constant multiple rule, it would be 2 times 5x to the fourth. 
And then if you combine this with the derivative of the 3x, the derivative of 3x, this is technically 3x to the first. So think about it like this, it's just 3. And then you would have 1x to the 0 power. Okay, so that whole part goes away, which makes sense. Um, 3x is a linear function, and 3 would be the slope of that. So it would make sense that df dx is 3. Um, so this would be our final answer if you want to clean it up a little bit. 10x to the 4th minus 3. La, 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 la. Are we digging this or what? All right. And again, I'm going kind of fast, but if you need to go back and rewatch any of this, feel free. Um, rule number five is a very important rule, um, but you have to be able to identify when the rules are being used. Um, so example, wow, example nine, I think that's probably a typo. I think I meant example six. Mm, sad. All right. Um, Example 6 is showing you two things being multiplied together. When you have any two, um, two functions being multiplied together, um, it's just the first thing times the derivative of the second thing plus the second thing times the derivative of the first thing. And within the product rule, you might be um, doing other rules, as we will be doing in this case. So f prime of x equals. All right, so the first, this would be the first, 2x plus x cubed. Okay, and then times the derivative of the second piece. And the derivative of the second piece, we're going to use the power rule first. x squared, the derivative of that is 2x to the first, or just 2x. And then the um, sum and difference rule, we can just go ahead and put minus. And the derivative of a constant was 0. Okay, so this is the first thing times the derivative of the second thing. Then you have to add the second quantity times the derivative of the first quantity. And again, we're going to use a whole bunch of other rules. Um, 2x, that's kind of that's um, linear. So if you take the slope of a linear function, you'll have just the constant in front. So this is going to be 2 plus, now your power rule, 3x squared. Okay, um, you can clean this up a little bit. It's really not needed, but if you want to distribute, this is going to be 4x squared plus 2x to the fourth. And then you would foil this monkey out. And this would be 2x squared plus 3x to the fourth minus 10 minus 15x squared and I'm going to move this up a little bit and again the rest is algebra now okay um, I've got a 2x to the fourth here and I've got a 3x to the fourth here so that makes 5x to the fourth and I've got a 4x squared here and a 2x squared here so that's 6x and then I'm going to take away 15x squared so that's going to be minus 9x squared and then I still have the constant of 10. That's our last guy. So there's f prime of x. That's it. God, could you imagine doing that with limits? Yeehaw. All right, so there's your final. All right, the last rule that we're going to talk about in this section is something called the quotient rule. And I assure you, it looks way scarier than it really is. If you are taking the derivative of two functions of x, one divided by the next, it's going to be the low, so the denominator, times the derivative of the numerator minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator all over the denominator squared. So, you know, every teacher has a little way of remembering it or a little sing-song thing you do. Um, the way I was taught is just to say low, so that's low, d high means the derivative of the high piece. So low d high minus high d low over the denominator squared we go. All right. And again, v cannot equal zero because then you, if it was, you'd be dividing by zero and that's not allowed. So we're going to do example, I think this would be seven now. Obviously I cut out some examples and I forgot to change my numbers. All right. Um, 
So let's go ahead and find df dx. So df dx. All right, and I'm going to do a little color coding here for you to help you out. I'm going to say that this is low, and I'm going to do the top is going to be Highland Park blue. So low, and that's going to be high. Okay, so when we do the derivative of a quotient, it's going to be low. So that's x squared plus 1. Anything that has um, addition or subtraction in it and it's a quantity, put it in parentheses. Um, d high means the derivative of the upper. So the derivative of 2x minus 5, that's linear, so it's just 2. And then we've got minus... And then we've got high, so this isn't the derivative of the high, this is just the numerator, minus high, 2x minus 5. d low means the derivative of the denominator, so the derivative of x squared plus 1, our power rule, says bring the 2 to the front, x, drop the power by 1, so that would just be a 1, and then the derivative of 1, which is a constant, is 0. So that all goes away. All right. So let's recap so far. We have low, d high, minus high, d low, and we need to go all over the denominator squared we go. So all over the denominator, which was red. And please remember your algebra and your lovely arithmetic, because you can't just distribute the square, you actually have to um, foil that bad boy out. Um, a lot of times when we do some free response, we're not going to worry about simplifying it. However, you should be comfortable simplifying this entire thing completely. So I'm going to go through it a couple times uh, at the beginning just to make sure you're all comfortable with it. So the first thing I'm going to do is distribute the two, um, the blue two to the red x squared plus one minus quantity. I'm going to distribute the 2x in to this guy, that, and that. So this would be 4x squared minus 10x. This is all going to be over x squared plus 1. We don't gain anything out of foiling that guy, um, so we're going to leave him alone. We're going to have 2x squared in the numerator minus 4x squared in the numerator, so that guy would be gone with that guy and we would end up with a negative 2x squared and then I still have a positive 10x remaining and a positive 1 and this is all over x squared plus 1 la 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 and that my friends is the derivative and we're gonna have lots of derivative rules after this but these are the main ones that get us started um, so we're going to stop here and you're going to go practice. All right, everybody have fun. Bye-bye.